I'm Lindsay, and I spent a year converting my 2013 Chevy Express into a camper van. And even though it's not totally done yet, it's time for my first official trip. This is the Montana Loop, a route I created that will take me to six different national parks over the course of one month on the road. Come with me as I fulfill my goal of seeing every park here in the United States and all the adventures that come with it. away from Wind Cave National Park, but uh, I stopped in Rapid City last night. Um, basically, uh, it was kind of nice to just be in civilization again and, if nothing else, um, buy some more LaCroix. Yes, I do have a problem. Um, but yeah, so um, stuff looks pretty interesting here. Um, I'm only going to spend like one or two days here, but hopefully that's enough to see everything, including the, the cave. So let's see what I'm getting myself into. because it's my first like official um, like legitimate campground that I've actually stayed at this whole trip so hoping it'll be kind of a nice experience. Well, um, I've basically gotten everything set up, which just means that I've opened all my doors and set up my chairs. So, um, yeah, now that I'm settled, uh, I'm thinking I might kind of just go on like a sunset trail run. Um, apparently, this is like one of the best parks to see wildlife in, including buffalo. So that would be really cool if I saw something um and i feel like sunset's probably the best time um so we'll see what happens <laughs> Not sure if you happened to catch a glimpse of that guy in my other clip, but the guy just walked past me. He said, "Hey, there's like some some bison or buffalo at Camp Road." He said, "There's buffalo at like a mile and a half out on the Centennial Trail." So it might happen. Let's see. I just hope I run into them and not a mountain lion.
baby space, okay? Yeah. Giving him ample space. Uh, I'm freaking out a little bit right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's, it's definitely defending its territory. It's trying to take a drink, so I'm gonna leave it alone, go back in the way I came. Oh, wow. That is so cool, but so fucking terrifying. Oh my God. I'm leaving, I'm sorry, bud. All right, see ya. Okay? All right. Okay, he's distracted by eating, okay. Oh my god, I can hear it snorting. I mean, like, I really tried to stick to the whole, uh, like, 25 yards distance, but, um, I also didn't want to just, like, turn about face and run, so. Uh, holy shit. Um, wow. That was crazy. Um, I guess, I guess I got what I wished for, but, uh, shit. At what cost? I think I'm scared of buffalo now. <laughs> I'm looking over my shoulder. <laughs> oh my god. All right, well, this was a definitely an eventful run, if, if only a short one. So maybe this is a blessing in disguise and I can cut my run a bit short, enabling me to shower and eat before the sun goes totally down. Um, I'm whispering because it's six in the morning and there are people sleeping outside. But this is one of the first few nights that it was kind of cold. Um, and therefore I finally have the opportunity to make hot chocolate. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. So a little later today, I plan to go on one of the cave tours, but before I do that, um, I have one very important chore to complete, especially before I go up to Montana. This is pretty much all my camping gear. Um, uh, most of this stuff I plan to take with me backpacking in Montana. So before I do that, uh, I'm planning to spray all of it with this, which is permethrin, um, an insect repellent spray that you can put on like fabrics, like your tent or your backpack, your outerwear. 
stuff like that. Um, apparently it's pretty strong and I'm hoping it does the job. That felt aggressive, but I think I'm done. <laughs> While I wait for all that shit to dry, um, I actually have a ticket to one of the cave tours here. Uh, basically starts in like 20 minutes, so I've got to get on some boots and grab a sweatshirt and head down to the cave elevator. is known for the unique, honeycomb-like formation of calcite covering its walls, known as boxwork. These formations are very rare. About 95% of all known boxwork on Earth is found right here in Wind Cave. That was pretty interesting. Um, I definitely wanted to see like the formations that are like very unique to Wind Cave, like the box work and, and all that, which I did get to see. I am going to actually check out the natural entrance to the cave um, because that's why it's called Wind Cave. Uh, the pressure difference between like the air in the cave and the air in like our atmosphere above ground um, can make it so that the cave is like breathing. Uh, like wind comes in and out of it. So I'm gonna hike down this hill to check that out and um, maybe get some dinner after that. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's windy. <laughs> That is the original entrance to Wind Cave. Um, it's a little hilariously underwhelming and small, but the breeze from it is actually really powerful. Aside from the um, barometric phenomenon happening here, um, this is also a like a sacred uh, site for the Lakota, um, as it is the supposed place where their people first emerged from under the earth um, once it was ready um, as deemed by their creator. So you'll kind of see a bunch of these prayer flags here, and they're actually tobacco bundles um, wrapped in cloth um, as sort of like an honoring offering to this place. And even after just a short time here, it's easy to see this is clearly a place worth honoring. currently leaving the park right now. Um, there is one other thing that I wanted to try and see here in South Dakota before I head up to Montana. This is the Needles Highway. 
Notorious for its beautiful sights, winding roads, and blasted through rock tunnels, I couldn't resist the chance to take the van through one of the most interesting roads in the country. There's a line. three tunnels along the Needles Highway, which get progressively smaller in size. Starting with the Hood Tunnel and moving through the Iron Creek Tunnel, my final squeeze would be in the Needles Eye Tunnel. At only 8 feet 4 inches wide, driving through this final rock formation is referred to as threading the needle. That one was way tighter. <laughs> uh, I, I, oh my god, I'm glad I only filmed the other one because that, uh, that was scary to go through twice for filming. I wasn't about to do that. After making it through the Needles Highway, I was finally ready to say goodbye to South Dakota. I never realized just how much there is to see here, but I know there's even more in Montana, so I'll see you out there. <laughs>